American denim, twill, and jeggings from past to future. How do you embroider them? Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Hope Yoder with Embellish, manufactured by RK Distributing. And there is so much that you can do to embellish denim and twill and jeggings with different types of a design. So I wanted to talk about how to properly stabilize each of those because you actually use different stabilizer. So let's just start with machine applique on twill. So this is a twill apron that you could purchase from your hardware store and this is a kid version. And we actually are using our Tool Time Embroidery Collection with machine applique. These are all applique designs. So the first step, whether it's twill or denim or any type of a fabric, is you're gonna need a fusible webbing behind your fabric. So before I get too in depth in these projects, I want to point out to you that on our website, rnkembellish.com, you can get this Embellish Stabilizer Recommended Guide. And if you've not already watched the first video to talk about demystifying stabilizers, why do we have fusible, non-fusible, sticky, be sure to watch that video. And then when you print this reference material, which you'll find in the reference section, uh, it gives you all kinds of recipes for success for embroidery. And I am actually working on page four and or page three of this where it just talks about three different categories of denim. So the recipe for success, you can download it and print it. So let's talk about our amazing new foolproof repositionable webbing. Now foolproof. Uh, yeah, it really is foolproof. So when you do applique, whether you're going to pre-cut it on a digital cutter or cut it with your scissors, which you can always find, you're gonna want to put a fusible webbing on the back. Now, what is so amazing about this product, a couple things. Well, we made a special formula that number one is a permanent bond. So all of you people that want quick, down and dirty, you wanna do a no-sew project like a banner or a baby onesie or even fuse it. I have a video on my webpage on how we fused appliques on a brown paper bag for party on a budget. So foolproof repositionable webbing. It's a permanent bond. It's lightweight. It cuts perfectly on every single brand of digital cutter. To use it on a digital cutter, you're gonna fuse the fabric with the foolproof webbing and it has a paper backing and you're gonna leave that paper backing on. Don't let anybody tell you to take it off because we've made a special coating on the back so that when you uh, fuse it or finger press it to your mat, your digital cutting mat, it's gonna stay in place. And then we've clean cut a little chef hat now, this isn't sticky because the protective coating is still on. So before I use it, I'm gonna score it and remove it to expose the sticky. So here's an applique, and again, this is pre-cut, but you don't need to have a digital cutter to use this. So if you do pre-cut it, like we've done here, you wanna make sure that you line up the cut shape with the placement line, which is always color number one, because there is no, extra excess hanging off. It fits perfectly. And then step number two is, here's a really good tip, fuse it. It is fusible webbing. So instead of embroidering all the way through the satin stitch and then getting up and going to your iron, or in, excuse me, your iron and fusing it in place, make sure you fuse it right after you place it on the placement line. And the reason for that is, have you ever had frayed stitches when you got done with the satin stitches it looks like it ripped the applique fabric well that's because it wasn't fused and when you fuse it it activates the permanent glue to permanently make it one with a foundation fabric and then when you're all done you have a beautiful fusible applique and this will go through the wash it's not going to lift off of the fabric if you fused it properly so we've done that to make these beautiful little appliques on a twill fabric. Now, what kind of stabilizer do we need for a twill? Well, it depends, twill and denim, it depends on what kind of design you're going to use. So I would consider this to be an open or a medium design. In other words, this is all fabric. So where you see the yellow, the blue, and the orange, that's not solid stitching, that's fabric. So this is not a real heavy, dense design. So in that case, I'm going to use my fusible, dissolvable 
tearaway. And that is over here. We've got two different things to talk about. So if the denim design is a medium design, meaning it's not solid, massive stitches, then your fusible, dissolvable tearaway. If you can fuse it, do it. So I'm going to fuse this to the back of my twill, and that's what we've done here. And then we hooped it, and then we did our embroidery. But before we embroidered, you've heard us talk about toppers. You want that embroidery thread not to sink down into the twill fabric, so we're going to use our embellish rinse away clear topper. That way, when we pull the excess topper off and we look at the design, the embroidery thread sits right off the fabric and it never sinks in. So this would be considered a medium. Now, if I was going to do a solid, dense design, and that would be something, um, if this was not applique, which it is, but if this was not applique and it was all solid filled, that's gonna embroider a lot different than something little like this. This is a big design for a big hoop. It's beautiful. This is from our Steampunk XL embroidery collection and the bag pattern is included in there and on the back it tells you all the embellished products we've used to make that. But instead of the fusible dissolvable tearaway, I've used our bold tearaway. It's 100% fiber and it's going to give the right amount of stitches. Now the dissolvable tearaway, fusible and non-fusible, holds 10,000 stitches and a 4x4 hoop. And you're going to find out more about that by watching that video and downloading the reference page right here. But a big dense design needs bolder tearaway. So fusible bold tearaway is what's ironed to the back of the bag. If you can fuse it, do it. So this is a twill fabric with a big dense design. So I'm going to fuse tearaway. Got it? Fuse it. And I would still use the same rinse away clear topper. Now sewing, how many of you out there sew? I love to sew. Obviously I made the bag, I do shirts, um, I do home deck, and I like to do decorative stitches. While I love my embroidery machine, I'm a sewist as well. So let me give you another example of why you would use the fusible tearaway. So here's a bad example. Now when I'm embroidering, let's move this aside, I am going to use tearaway stabilizer to do decorative stitches, right? Doesn't that make sense? Haven't you been told to put tearaway underneath fabric before you do decorative satin stitches, right? But sometimes it makes a mess. And here's a hot mess that I did. And let's get a close up of this so that you can see the hot mess going on here. So if I did what everybody told me to do and I just laid a tearaway underneath cotton fabric, Look, that fabric is still limp. It isn't stable. A stabilizer should do what its name says. It should stabilize the fabric. Just by putting something stiffer underneath fabric doesn't mean I change the properties of the fabric. It's puckered. And if you can get right up in there, we can see where uh, it's tunneling. And I've even got a whole fold going underneath there. This is a hot mess, but this is just changing instead of the bold tearaway I've chosen the fusible bold tearaway and this y'all is not a hot mess this is beautiful and I've used our matte embroidery thread which isn't just for embroidery you can do decorative stitches it's a 40 weight thread and it's polyester and it's beautiful all right so let's look at that again this is just rows and rows of beautiful decorative stitches. Why it looks so good is because I use the fusible bold tearaway. And when I'm all done, let me just tear a little bit of this away. And you're going to iron this on with a medium temperature iron, not super hot. And look how easy and it tears away. So I always want to tear away the stabilizer when I'm holding my fingers over the bobbin thread on the back, but it tears nice and clean and the stabilizer is going to stay underneath there. So the next time you're going to do decorative satin stitches, choose our fusible bold tearaway. All right, now, so I've covered twill, a light medium design and a heavy design. The light fusible dissolvable, the heavy fusible bold. Let's talk about jeggings. All right, let's move this out of the way. Jeggings are my favorite thing to do. And so I have made two different pairs of jeans that a lot of times I wear at my events. And I 
Uh, Jagging, so yeah, the guy doing the filming behind here, he said, can you spell that? Is that really a word? J-E-G-G-I-N-G-S, jeggings. And that's today's modern jeans. So jegging are super stretchy. Get this on camera here. And you can see that it has a lot of stretch. So jegging is today's modern jeans. Years ago, it was Levi and Wrangler. Those suckers didn't stretch. They were stiff. You had to wash them a million times to get them soft. But these are super soft. So when you're embroidering on something super stretchy, you might think that you would use a cutaway stabilizer. I did that. And I did this beautiful embroidery. And you know what? I went to put the jeans on. I couldn't get them over my legs because even though I cut between the stabilizer, it prevented the fabric from stretching. And I don't want that on jeggings. I do want that on traditional denim or twill, but not on jeggings. All right. Can you see that lovely stretch? So this design is from our steampunk. We have steampunk XL with a bag pattern. And then we have steampunk. And those are the designs that are on the jegging. And let's turn this inside out, just so you can kind of see that. And I'll show you what not to do and what to do. All right, so here's the inside of the jeans, right? And what I've done is I have fused, embellish, fusible, dissolvable tearaway. You wanna do it with a medium to a low temperature iron, not iron as hot as you can get it. Because if you do that, this is what you get. Can you see that I still have, even though it stretches, I still have some stabilizer because I did these at an event and I was talking and I knew better, but I just fused the heck out of them with a high temperature iron. Y'all, the directions say don't do that. The inside says don't do that, but I did it. Now, it still works, but it's got a little stabilizer. So too hot of an iron is going to look like that. Now you may be thinking, how in the world did I get these on the embroidery machine? So here is a better example of me not being a bull in a china shop and fusing too much. These are my favorite jeans so far, and I can't wait to make more of these. This design is from our Roses and Arrows embroidery collection. And if you've not looked on Pinterest or been shopping online, there is an embroidery company, or not an embroidery company, but a very popular po uh, company that makes embroidered denim everything. And they're so expensive. These jeans would have cost over $400. And everything is matte. Matte is what is hot. And this beautiful cupcake display shows the beautiful 40 weight, 100% polyester embellished matte thread. I just think this really makes it look beautiful. So the roses and arrows are used on here and the matte threads. And then we have the RNK cordless rhinestone setter with Swarovski crystals. All right, so I put that there. And then I've also put that on the leg. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. Now you may be thinking, how did you do that? Because did you rip a seam? Well, I do happen to be fortunate enough to own a free arm embroidery machine. And it comes with special hoops. And with those hoops, I can actually embroider in the middle without having to rip them. If that's not a machine that you have, then the solution is pretty easy. Usually on jeans, one side is going to have some top stitching. I'm not gonna touch that or unsew or seam rip, open up the seam, whatever you wanna call it, that. But there's usually a side that doesn't have top stitching, so I would just unsew, take a seam ripper, and unsew that so you can see the difference. That would not be something I wanted to try to sew back together again. So I would just open the jeans to about here, and I would iron my feasible dissolvable tearaway, but then I might want to add another product with it if I want to just baste it in the hoop. I could use our embellish sticky tearaway. That's the same foundation, half water soluble, half tearaway. So you could combine those two layers. But let's take a look on the inside of these. But what's great about these is I didn't iron these. This legitimately came out of my suitcase. We didn't touch it with an iron, but I want you to look at that stretch. So let's get a close up. These are jeggings, y'all. It's a 
amazing. If you've not ever bought yourself a pair of jeggings, go on into your favorite store like American Eagle and take a look at these. But look how beautiful, it rebounds beautifully. I don't have to worry about it not fitting over my leg. I can actually wear it. So let's come down here, let's zoom out. And just let me show you this right in here. Um, and let's turn this inside out. And this, I did a much better job. And the inside of that, you guys look at that. Now I'll show you my, where I got a little too hot with the iron, but this is the magic of fusible dissolvable tear away. So our fusible version controlled that stretch. So when I embroidered it, I didn't worry about it stretching out of alignment. It fused it. If you can fuse it, do it. But when I washed it away, and these jeans have probably been washed and worn 10, 11 times, if not more, it's my favorite jeans, but the 50% dissolvable fibers are gone. If there's no thread to hold it or trap it in place, it washes away. And then where there is thread, you can still see a little bit of that stabilizer. So it leaves just the right amount of stabilization in all the right places. Now, where my little uh-oh on this, I did much better, but I did get a little bit too warm. And so on this seam, I have just a little bit of stabilizer because if you heat it too hot with the iron, then it, you're gonna have a hard time for it to wash away. So I did pretty good there. And let's see, the leg, the leg, same thing. Look at that, just perfect. So next time you wanna do a pair of jeggings and they're super stretchy, don't think about cutaway for these. Think about embellish, fusible, dissolvable cutaway. And don't forget to use embellish clear rinse away topper.